13, looking at uh, 3.33 p.m. Mr. Hopkins, roll call. Okay. Dominic. Present. Lyndon Johnson, Present. Jackson, Lynn, Bowman, Cawthorn, Gage Watts, Middleton, Yo. Atkins, Chavez, Smith, Present. Lewis Johnson. Present. We have a quorum, sir. Thank you, Mr. Hopkins. We're going to have the invocation by Commissioner Lewis Johnson, and we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance uh, by request by Commissioner Mike Middleton. By request. <laughs> Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you now in the name of Jesus, in whose name there is peace and fullness of joy. Oh God, how great thou art. We come, O oh Lord, and we ask that you would by your spirit and by your power, that you would lead us, guide us, and direct us, that you would put us on one accord, O oh God, that we might make those decisions that are best for the citizens of Cattle Parish. Bless this commission and all those that are, in present, that are present here today. Bless our parish, our city, our country. This is our prayer, and it's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone, please face the American flag. Place your right hand over your heart. If you're a veteran, you have the option of rendering a brow salute and recite with me the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> All right, thank you, Commissioner Lewis Johnson and Commissioner Mike Middleton. Yes, huh? Do I have any agenda additions? We have one item we need to add. Uh, I got one we agenda. Had delay, we had a delay from Ms. Meredith Duncan, resolution of recognition at our last meeting, and this needs to be added to Thursday's agenda. So moved. Second. All right, I got a motion to expand the agenda and add it, and a second. Go ahead and vote. Well, let's we'll first have to open it up. Anybody speak right. for or against? Would anyone like to speak for the agenda edition? Would anybody like to speak against? All right. That's closed. Let's vote on the expanded agenda and agenda edition. Please vote. Commissioner Dominic, would you like to be on the board for a reason? You no, know, I was just I was trying to get on the board to make that motion. Sure, why not? That's good. Yeah, All right. Uh, we, well, we have a problem. We just lost a quorum on this vote. How do we move the vote? I thought he voted before he walked out. Agenda edition. Uh, all right, and that passes unanimously, so that gets added. Next, we move to citizen comments. All right, citizens that wish to address <coughs> the commission must fill out a comment card and forward to the president or the clerk of commission. Comments by any citizen will be limited to three minutes. I show three. If, you, if there's anyone else here that would like to speak, please turn them in to Mr. Hopkins over there. First, I have Kenneth J. Kreft. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the commission, Dr. Wilson. Kenneth Kreft, 157 Archer, 71105. I'm here partially on behalf of the Broadmoor Ever Association asking this commission to once again be generous and grant the full request for the 2020 grant for the after school tutoring, a program going into its fourth year, and the results of the first three show student test scores have improved the ones in the tutoring program better than anywhere in the state of Louisiana by far. It's very successful. Uh, most of the kids who are tutored are actually living in District 3 in Stephen Jackson's district. Thought about Stephen this morning when I saw a basketball score 67 to 60 and it was bugging the bleep out of me and that's when I realized that's how many votes he got from mayor. 
but it came it all came through the ether but uh, those grants are wonderful after school tutoring and they're run on a commission calendar year starting in January but the current grant the last day of tutoring is November 21st and that's the first semester so we want to capture those kids in the spring of 20 so if we get half the grant we can only finish and do the spring of 20 but if y'all allocate the full grant request we can do it again starting in the fall of 20 for another year second point I'm gonna try to tie several things together involving a new courthouse the Confederate Monument juvenile justice and House Bill 71 bear with me it's a little convoluted we have a 93 year old courthouse and a 113 year old monument I saw recently in another jurisdiction where voters approved a courthouse and a juvenile justice complex contiguous it was in South Carolina sometimes that works I don't know if it'll work in Caddo I don't think we need a new courthouse but I think a possible solution to the monument issue would be a new courthouse somewhere with a new juvenile justice complex and turn the courthouse into a museum something maybe for the long-range planning committee in early 2020 House Bill 71 is only relevant in so far as it failed last year it was by Thomas Carmody Jr. District 6 Mr. Risponi might win might not a week from Saturday but should he win he has pledged to sign a law similar to House Bill 71 and there are many people who say they would reintroduce such a bill finally I just want to thank whether they're here or not Matthew Jerry Mike Doug Jim and Lewis I want to welcome John Paul Jim Ken Todd Ed and Roy and the last thing I want to say please Lord grant this request beat Alabama <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Kreb. Mr. Kreb, just for clarification, when you were referring to the tutoring program, were you referring to all of them or one specific district? The one tutoring program, both at AC Steer, Little Gators, and Arthur Circle. Okay. Thank uh, through the Broadmoor Neighbor Association. Correct. Good question. That's what I was there thinking. There are other tutoring programs, but the one with the best increases in test scores is the one. Uh, y'all fund through the Broadmoor Neighborhood Association. Thank you, Mr. Kraft. Mrs. Brenda O'Brock. Brenda O'Brock, 248 Lake Point Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana. <clears throat> I'm just handed out mission statements of the Caddo Parish Commission and the City of Cleveland's mission statement there, there is quite a difference and uh, there are some disturbing things on the Caddo Parish Commission mission statements I think we can have a better mission statement for instance it says integrity service and excellence I like that but the first sentence is committed to redefining excellence I would like a definition of redefining excellence um, excellence is excellence and if you define it as something else I'd like to know what that is uh, also committed to providing our citizen investors who are a city investors is it is it George Soros if it is I don't want to commit to him so we need to be specific now I'm going to read to you city of Cleveland's mission statement we are committed to improving the quality of life in the city of Cleveland by strengthening our neighborhoods delivering superior services, embracing the diversity of our citizens, and making Cleveland a desirable, safe city in which to live, work, raise a family shop, study, play, and grow old. I love that word strengthening, but when you try to tear down monuments that have been up for 113 years, you're not strengthening a city. You're not. Think about a million dollars that is spent on tutoring our inner city kids that need that we're on the bottom in education think about when you walk into a room and a couple has had a heated argument and you want to make yourself invisible and get out of there this is what the city of Shreveport has become people don't want to come here because we have been wrangling over the same subject for years 
it's time that we grew up and we decided to have a city that people want to come to and be a part of. Thank you, Mrs. O'Brock. Next is Bonnie Farr. Thank you. Bonnie Farr, 8986 Marlowe Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana. Commission, thank you for allowing me to speak. Some of you may remember the Caddo land grab of last year, where the federal agencies came in and was going to grab that land from the citizens who lived there and owned it. So we, the Caddo citizens, are concerned about our own property. We are asking every elected person if you would, some of you have our uh, paper to sign, if you would sign a promise saying as an elected person, you will protect, you promise to protect us for our property rights against anyone who wants to take it away from us. If you, if you haven't gotten one of these, raise your hand, I'll hand it to you. You have to the 16th to return it to us, or you can do it today and give it back to us. We, uh, we just want this promise from our elected people. Is there anyone that needs a, sign, a sheet? Have you seen, have you seen it, Doug? Oh, yeah. All right, and that concludes citizen comments. Any late arrivals, we do have a section at the end of the agenda. If you still wish to uh, address the commission, you may fill out a, call, a comment card and turn it in to Mr. Hopkins. Uh, Mr. Hopkins, next. Next, we move to visitors. We have Mrs. Stacy Brown, Shreveport Bowser Convention and Tourism Bureau, Executive Director. Our annual update, I believe. Good afternoon. Hey, Stacy. Mm -hmm. Vice President Chavez, commissioners. Dr. Wilson, appreciate you allowing me to come before you today to give you a little update on tourism in the Caddo and Bossier Parishes area. Um, your appointee, Kelly Morris, could not be here today. Um, she is going to be sending a message uh, via Commissioner Dominic uh, for Thursday's meeting. Um, I am going to be out of town, so I will not be here Thursday. Uh, but just wanted to let you know that she uh, does represent you well on the Convention and Tourist Bureau Board. I would like to give a, a brief video, and I apologize to, to Doug and Michelle for being late and getting that to you. So we're going to do our best to show this to you. Report for 2019. Shreveport Bossier is among the top three most visited destinations in Louisiana. People come here for the Cajun and Texan culture, home-style comfort foods that we celebrate in our official meal of North Louisiana, and time-honored traditions and culture that are always on full display at our year-round festivals. From Mardi Gras to mud bugs and sunflowers to Christmas, there's always a reason to celebrate in the sister cities. Gaming, craft breweries, family-friendly attractions, and the lure of outdoor sports and recreational activities add to the many reasons visitors love us and locals support our industry. Still not convinced? Then consider this. A report published by Longwoods International titled A Day Visitor Research Report estimated that 8.6 million people visited our community in 2018. You know, in the first half of this year, we hosted 122 conferences, which produced over 30,000 hotel rooms which brought to town to more than 139,000 people. These conventioners came from almost every state in various countries around the world. Here's just a few of the bigger conferences that we hosted in 19. Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church, the 46th annual Louisiana Fire Chiefs Association. One we're really proud of is the National Governors Association and the Community College Cyber Summit to name a few. The Streetport Bossier Sports Commission is so proud to have teamed up with the Streetport, Bossier City, Caddo and Bossier Parish communities to bring incredible sporting events 
in 2019 to our region, such as Showtime Boxing, the LHSA State Wrestling, the Louisiana State Coaches Convention, Kayak Bass Fishing Nationals, the Red River Balloon Rally, and the FIVB Women's Volleyball Olympic Qualifier. In the first six months of 2019, we've hosted 62 sports events that have generated nearly 20,000 hotel rooms and attracted 142,000 sports participants and fans. Leisure visitation is and will continue to be our biggest piece of the tourism pie. Hotel occupancy is pacing strong. Hotel overnight stays year to date is 65.8%. Our strong regional marketing campaigns target drive markets and focus on food, festivals, and fun. Our 2019 Mardi Gras and summer campaigns have yielded nearly 32,000 trackable booked hotel room nights for our community. Yet our story doesn't end there. Content marketing continues to be one of our strongest tools to engage people and make them aware of our communities. Our videos, blogs, news releases, brochures, websites, and other marketing collateral highlight our community's big personality, southern charm, hospitality, flavor, and diversity. Our videos have been viewed nearly 247,000 times, and our blogs on 20by49.com have been read close to 65,000 times. Because people can't get enough of our food content, our most popular blog written in 2018 continues to be read and shared by our visitors even today. I mean, who doesn't want to learn more about those stuffed shrimp? Which I might add, were originally created right here in Shreveport Bossier. Stories like Shreveport style stuffed shrimp and Shreveport Bossier's local food culture continue to be consumed and shared by the travel media. In the first six months of 2019 alone, we've hosted more than two dozen visiting travel riders. Here's what some of them had to say about Shreveport Bossier. I love the everybody welcome atmosphere of the Mardi Gras celebrations in the Shreveport Bossier City area, wrote Elaine Warner for the Dallas Morning News. If you're lucky, a visit to Shreveport Bossier unfolds like a Steinbeck novel. You're likely to meet some of those strange and intensely interesting people falling in love with its edges, wrote Cynthia Drake for the Austin American Statesman. Strawn's Eat Shop is just a down-home friendly place to eat, says manager Angela Irwin, a 17-year veteran. Handed down recipes, great employees, people love it, wrote Donald Liebenson for Thrillist.com. We've been able to generate more than $18.7 million in public relations coverage. That means for all the stories written, television and radio mentions, and internet articles that featured Shreveport Bossier, it would have cost us more than $18 million in advertising dollars if we'd had to pay for it ourselves. To keep our forward momentum, our goals are simple. Continue to work with our community partners to showcase our assets, give us a competitive edge, and appeal to a diverse audience of visitors. Strengthen our customer service and guest experiences for our leisure, convention, group, sports, and international visitors. Provide research-driven strategies that address a destination master plan, future branding, product development, and other enhancements that benefit our residents and visitors. Shreveport Bossier has been, is, and will continue to be a top destination for visitors from all around the nation and the world. The budget you have before you uh, takes into account the goals, objectives, and strategies outlined in the business plan as a result of the board and staff retreats. If you turn to pages four and five of the business plan and look at goals number one, two, and three, you'll see they contain our big overarching vision, which includes the destination assessment, destination plan, community engagement, branding, product development, and a multi-sports complex feasibility study. This year we completed and rolled out uh, the results of our destination next assessment. That measures the destination strength and community support for tourism. It informs how the public and private sectors can collaborate to grow tourism in our visitor economy. The assessment identified two major challenges, litter and crime. Litter uh, is one area we've been able to work on successfully already, uh, working with both cities, both parishes, with Shreveport Green, Keep Bossier Beautiful. Um, we've also designed some special community uh, efforts geared towards the hospitality industry. In fact, today was a hospitality industry quarterly cleanup, and you saw some people from the hotels, some restaurants, the Louisiana Boardwalk, um, downtown Shreveport Unlimited, which produces mud bugs, 
all out today doing some cleanups in those areas where you often see visitors. You know, when you go as a visitor and see an area that looks a little run down, maybe it's not as well cupped and there's litter, you feel unsafe, whether it really is uh, safe or not. So that has an effect on safety as well. We've also worked on a communications crisis plan. Um, with our communications crisis plan, we have worked with uh, the cities, the parishes, the sheriff's offices, police offices, emergency preparedness, to really look at our destination as a whole because if a, an emergency situation happens here in our community, it affects thousands of visitors as well as our local people. So we need to make sure we're communicating with them as well. So that's an area we're continuing to work on and our next step there is to work on social media contact and how do we work on that together uh, with all of our various uh, entities. Our next steps are a destination master plan which is a comprehensive plan outlining the sustainable development of infrastructure, facilities, services, attractions, events, and public-private partnerships to improve overall visitor experiences and elevate the quality of life in our destination. Also working on a destination brand strategy, which is a detailed vision for developing a specific destination's unique identity and value proposition aligned with the collective interests of not only tourism, but government and economic development as well. Through programs such as these, uh, we are working to develop our destination by taking an active role in support of our infrastructure and strengthening participation with our attractions, hotels, restaurants, and retail. We appreciate your commitment too, and I wanna say a special congratulations for Caddo Common Park it is fabulous and already not a great, only a great, great asset for the local community, but for visitors as well, um, especially with the Friends With You exhibit that's up currently. If you haven't been, I really encourage you to go. Also, another key um, is our division, which is the Sports Commission. So we wanna say a special thank you to Commissioner Lyndon Johnson, who is on our board, as well as Ken Ante. Uh, your other appointee on the commission board. Um, within the budget, you'll see the sports department, and that's where the bureau budgets for the staffing, uh, all of the development of bringing in sporting events, the trade shows, the sales efforts that go into that. Within the sports commission budget, that's where you see the events, and that's the, the event-specific budgets to bring in and to host events in our community. If you look on the second booklet that says budget on page two, you'll see the overall budget for the Convention and Tourist Bureau. We project to end the year up slightly over what we had budgeted in revenue and come in a little bit under on expenses. Next year, we're budgeting to be up just a little bit over what we project to end the year with this year. Um, and we will keep our uh, expenses in line so that we will have a balanced budget. Again, uh, Vice President Chavez, Commissioners, uh, Dr. Wilson, I appreciate you allowing me to come before you today. I'd be glad to answer any questions, and I'd also like to invite you to our Christmas open house. Uh, it'll be here before you know it, December the 6th from 11 to 2, and you will be getting an invitation for that as well. Ms. Brown, thank you for coming. Uh, do I see any commissioners on the board? No? Uh, I just had one question on the uh, identity. Uh, do you have any, uh, I guess, perception on what that might be uh, for Shreveport. It, it sounds like a good project. It, it's going to be looking at our destination and community as a whole, not just Shreveport or Bossier, but Caddo and Bossier parishes, uh, because people look at us not only from within, but also from outside, not just for visitors, but economic development as well. Um, so it's going to be taking in everyone together. It'll be a, a major research undertaking to look at what do our customers say? What do the economic development uh, site selectors say? What are our group tour visitors, as well as our individual visitors, as well as our local residents say about our community, what they love and what they'd like to see? When do you uh, think that we'll get that report back? We're, we have not undertaken the report. We'll be building a coalition to put that together, so the commission will be a part of that as we move forward. I'm anxious to say, I know a lot of the, the word on the street is we're becoming a fast tech hub and a, a food entity. So uh, I, would, I would hope that that moves forward. I would say those are definitely two that are, are very good strengths for us. Absolutely. Well, Ms. Brown, thank you for coming. I appreciate your report. Awesome, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Mr. Hopkins. Next we have Ms. Madeline Covington, Hostel White Netterville, 2020 status update and proposed internal audit presentation. You'll have a sheet in front of you today. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you guys for having me. As he said, I'm Madeline Covington with Postal Weight and Netterville. I'm here to provide an update on the internal audit activities from 2018 and 2019, and then present our proposed 2020 internal audit plan for your approval. And so to provide a brief um, overview of the internal audits that we've completed so far, in 2018, we completed the Caddo Parish Animal Services internal audit. In 2019, we have completed audits of non-governmental organizations, vendor and contract management, and juvenile services detention. As you'll see on your handout, um, the last item that was previously on our plan for 2019 was human resources benefit selection. This was ultimately removed from the plan as the parish chose not to select a new vendor to process benefits and this internal audit was planned to be around the vendor selection process. And so moving into our 2020 proposed internal audit plan. So as many of you probably recall, at the end of 2018, we facilitated a parish-wide risk assessment where we um, sent a risk assessment survey to management personnel and current commissioners um, and ask you guys to risk rank the auditable areas within the parish. And you can see on your handout the areas that were risk ranked as high and moderate by Caddo Parish personnel um, during the end of 2018 during that process. Um, on your handout, the top four highest risk ranked areas, um, those with the asterisk, have been completed. Madeline, you might just make sure everybody's on the right page. Is yes. It the it's the colored one, right? Six. Yeah. Yes. Risk rating by area is where I am. Page six. I got you. Yes. Thanks. So those top four, um, NGOs, animal services, juvenile services detention, and vendor and contract management have been completed in 2018 and 2019. So as we looked to um, develop our 2020 plan, we looked at the next highest risk ranked areas from the risk assessment previously completed. What we also did was we reached out to various um, members of Caddo Parish management just to get their input on any kind of new emerging risk for the parish or anything that we should consider in addition um, to these risk assessment results. So based on the 2018 risk assessment and our conversations, um, on page seven you will see our proposed 2020 plan, which would include Caddo Correctional Center, Human Resources, and Juvenile Services Probation. And in addition to those three areas, we will um, conduct follow-up activities on the internal audits that we've previously completed. Does anyone have any questions related to the audits we've done so far or the 2020 plan? A quick question, uh, President. Mm -hmm. President Chavez, uh, thank you very much, Madeline. Just wanted to make sure everybody was aware that uh, can you remind us why we and, and I asked you this in the in the committee meeting I've just forgotten the response uh, why did we delay the juvenile court portion you know obviously we've been tracking along in order as recommended by the mm -hmm. by the risk ranking but we've delayed the juvenile court portion for a, a specific reason and I can't remember that specific reason. yes that's correct so um, on the risk assessment, we included parish funded agencies in addition to more parish departments that are managed by the parish. So juvenile court is a parish funded agency's agency, but the parish isn't controlling control. their day-to-day -day operations. And so we felt that it would be best to audit those areas that you guys are managing. And then after all of those areas have been completed, um, y'all could consider moving to audit those parish funded agencies so that was the rationale behind that decision so we've been, we have been tracking the exact 
ranking that we that we established two years ago. And we've mm -hmm. reached, we're, and in this coming year, we will do the last two in the high risk category and the first, yes. the, the, effectively the top one that we control in the moderate risk category. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner LBJ. Yes, I understand the uh, risk ranking that we did, but um, I think that we probably done beat up on finance and human resources enough, and we hadn't even touched public works. And I would like to move public works one of those up for 2020 instead of uh, continuing to beat up on finance and human resources. Um, just to spread the, the fun around to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, a, is that a motion? Well, no. when we get to it in the okay. meeting, I, w I would make that, that amended right. motion to that when it comes up. But I just thought I'd bring that out because, uh, I mean, when you look at what they've done, I mean, it's been human resources. Uh, the NGO process was part of that. Uh, then you got one that's already on here of human resources. And so uh, you had uh, finance and human resources on the vendor and contract management which was a high one, as they said. So let's spread the wealth to another one and then come back to that uh, later on. We got four years, so we can do that. We can kind of mix them around. We won't have to go in order. There's nothing to say we had to pick them in order. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Lynn. When this was originally adopted to do audits of, of the parish which are mandated by the by the charter that we have and we had not been following the charter um, one of the original things for us to audit when it went to executive committee um, closed door executive committee they changed a lot of the stuff that was on the original document and part of that was to see if we actually are following the charter for which this is now part of what we do, which is on the charter for which we had not followed for many years. Um, and there were some things on there as far as uh, the way that we operate government is, are we operating the most efficiently to serve the citizens of Caddo Parish the best? Um, and a lot of those were taken off of that in executive committee. And so there's a lot of things that we're uh, slated to audit that are <coughs> A little fluffier than some of the brass tacks that we had originally put on there, and that and got a little switcherooski on there. Anyway, that's all, Mr. Acting President. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Dr. Wilson, I know there's the. Um, that's the executive committee. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying Dr. Wilson in regards to his comment. I'm just I'm addressing you. Yes, uh, the. The items on here that are asterisked, that are the higher risk, yes, that I know that they're set to have the follow-up on, mm -hmm. um, do we have a report, and obviously right now may not be the time to give that report, but that the commission could receive via email um, and then maybe be welcomed into that follow-up meeting with them when we go over those four high-risk items? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. What, what happens with, when they come back for the review, to, to make sure we, we've already complied to what was needed uh, with shortcomings on it. So, and we uh, informed them of that. So when they come back, the cursory review again, they will bring that out again. Okay. But the items that were pointed out, as in the most previous previous uh, uh, survey and inspection was already taken care of as well. And, and was, we have comment, management comments next to the findings. I, I do. ongoing. Okay. I know the NGOs, um, there was a lot of, uh, issues with that um, but I was referring to the other three I know we, we didn't get an update on those ones um, and the NGOs that, that's going to come a little bit different from a committee yes. uh, but I know getting an update on those other three would be beneficial to the board yes sir and as, as you recall Commissioner Chavez when they briefed us they also told you all what all response was okay thank you Dr. Wilson uh, Commissioner Atkins for the second thank you uh, Acting President Chavez to follow up on Dr. Wilson's comments, the reports that the, the uh, Postal Weight Netterville does report out on their findings to the Finance Committee, and uh, and they they state their observations, they state uh, what the risks are to those observations, they they state uh, what the recommended 
uh, resolution is, and then there's a they state the action that's been taken. And uh, so at that point, there the actions that have been taken to date are all summarized, typically in the first presentation to the to the audit to the audit committee, and then in later presentations to the audit committee, they will follow up again on those previous presentations and say where where we are. So they are they are just in, in dis, you know disclosure to everybody. They are reporting those those matters out to committee. If the full body wants to hear them, that's fine as well. Um, all due respect to Madeline, though, it's it's not like. It's not the best reading material. It's not the most <laughs> exciting reading material around. It's accounting, you know, <laughs> it's accounting reading material. So, uh, you know, it, 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 I, but certainly if the body wants to see it all, that's fine. I, I definitely know Commissioner Lynn would like to be in on those. Uh, I'm sure a few other ones. And I think Commissioner Lynn has attended a number of those meetings. Is that all? Yes, thank you. Commissioner LBJ? Second? Yes, I just wanted to do a clarification that there was not a lot of things wrong with the NGO. There are some things that could make it better. Right. But um, since I've been down here, it has improved greatly. So, I mean, I don't want to say that from this audit report that they found a lot of stuff that was wrong and they didn't. That would be misstating what happened. They found some things that could improve the process. So I just want to make sure that is stated right and on the record because I was chairman of that, of that subcommittee for a couple of years, so I don't want nobody thinking that it was done wrong. Thank you. I think about a $250,000 reduction in the budget was, was uh, to be applauded for yourself, Commissioner. So good job on that. Thank you. Um, I see no other questions. Okay, yeah, that's all I had. I that's appreciate you guys. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Covington. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Mr. Hopkins. Next, we move to the administrator report. President Chavez, Commissioners, good afternoon. We have a few items today we'd like to cover with you all. Beginning with Mr. Alan Clark, we'd like to give you some updates. So, Mr. Clark, would you come forward to sign, please, sir? From the Metropolitan Planning Commission. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Parish Administration. Good afternoon. Just wanted to come by and meet with you. Uh, I've always been interested in making certain that we keep the Parish Commission abreast of uh, the programs that we're initiating through the MPC and we're doing some new and innovative things with the MPC. Uh, one of the things that I, I have to continue to remind us of is the, the master plan that was adopted in one of the uh, cornerstone uh, components of the master plan was the unified development code that would lead to development and we've all been pushing for development and just to let you know we're still struggling through that process uh, we're very optimistic that we're going to get to uh, the completion of some of the amendments that were designed to relieve some of the stress that was caused by the initial adoption of, of the uh, document uh, we just presently have where in a lot of instances, uh, possibly uh, development is more restrictive in the parish than it is in the city because we've not adopted those, those amendments that would lead to relaxing some of the restrictions of, of the uh, present code. Uh, we are also, through the master plan, we're finally getting an opportunity. We have been able to uh, hire the additional planners that we were trying so desperately to do. We begin to uh, we begin to get into uh, true uh, pure planning. Uh, for so long, we were just operating as a a zoning board and a and a zoning staff, but we are actually viewing new districts that we are going to be introducing to the Metropolitan Planning Commission, which will eventually get to the City Council and the Parish Commission to introduce some new ideas that that we have come up with and we've done the research around the United States. We found that some of the ideas that we have, uh, which the city of Shreveport and the parish of Caddo, if properly adopted, will be the only cities uh, that have these certain districts there. They're really creative districts that uh, will be dealing with uh, possible mixed use uh, 
mixed use and uh, alternative housing means uh, for the uh, for for the parish and the city. Uh, we also wanted to. I think that we came down uh, probably uh, six to eight months ago. What we are providing for the city council is we're able to through the My Government Online software. We're able to uh, buy city council districts, and we want to do it by parish commission districts, uh, share with uh, commissioners uh, everything that's happening in the district from a developmental process, a vantage point. We are able to show the uh, city council uh, members uh, all the new developments uh, when applications are coming into the uh, MPC for rezoning or new developments. We are able to show them all the certificates of occupancy because that's showing all the new businesses that are being opening that are being open in the city or the parish we're showing them the violations uh, periodically we do have violations that we investigate uh, and we're showing them all of the uh, the possible rezonings that are going on and special use permits and so forth that are going on so at a later date if you all would allow I'd like to come back with some the only problem is there, there are some fees associated with uh, uh, allowing this to uh, filter out into the parish. I'd like to come back and share that with you. I think it would be uh, very beneficial to you. Uh, it gives you information of your districts. Uh, in a lot of instances, uh, the information we're collecting uh, is for parish districts, but your districts overlap uh, city districts, so we cannot break it down exactly uh, to the uh, district level that, that you have. We, I wanted to advise you because you may be getting calls. Uh, we have added uh, additional zoning enforcement inspectors and what that does is it allows us to not just be restricted to only replying to uh, complaints in the parish. We are able to become proactive in the areas outside the immediate city limits of Shreveport. Uh, we been working very comprehensively in North Shreveport uh, and uh, so if you're getting calls it's because we are reintroducing ourselves to the citizens outside the city limits and letting them know that there are laws that uh, prevent certain things from happening and we're trying to improve the quality of life for the entire uh, metropolitan planning limits. Uh, this also helps us introduce ourselves uh, to these outlining areas because we are also involved in annexations. Uh, for a long time, the MPC was not involved in annexations, but all uh, proposed annexations to the city of Shreveport, the first step of the, uh, that a person or a business or a developer has to do is to file an application with the Metropolitan Planning Commission. We review it, we conduct public hearings, and we recommend to the city whether or not to uh, to accept an annexation. We have, lastly, we have been involved, uh, as many of you know, the limits for the Metropolitan Planning Commission uh, go beyond some of the municipalities out in the parish of Caddo. We have been working, reaching out to the towns of Greenwood and the towns of Blanchard. We found that there are some technical assistance that we can provide to these to these municipalities, uh, many times they have limited planning staff, many times they have limited zoning staff. Uh, we're just reaching out to them, sharing with them the availability of, of our staff and trying to provide assistance to them in order to allow them to orderly grow because it's for, for, for things to be uniform. We go outside beyond Greenwood, we go beyond Blanchard and we go up to their city limits. So we're on both sides. It just helps if we're all following the same development pattern and doing some of the similar laws. So we're reaching out to them to assist them in developing their uh, zoning codes and, and things of that nature. That's all I have. Mr. Clark, uh, thank you for that presentation. You have many commissioners that would like to make comments. First off is Commissioner Dominic. Yeah. Um, Mr. Clark, thank you for being here today. Um, here's some of your comments about being up in 
north of Shreveport, North Caddo Parish. Um, I'd like to probably visit with you in a day or two and get him a few of those calls. I think some of our administration and staff have gotten some that uh, we may need to look at some of those issues where their people are getting 10 day notice and they're really getting freaked out. And I want to make sure that you know no one's fixing to go to jail or anything like that. And I think that's what they have concerns about. So I'll try to get in touch with you before Thursday if that's okay. And that, that, that's why, Commissioner, that I wanted to come down and share with you that we were doing those things and we were going out. And a lot of times, uh, the the ordinances uh, beyond the city limits of Shreveport uh, for the parish of Cattle need to be different. And, and sometimes and, and they and need to be modified. We may need to look at changing some of that stuff. I yes, don't know if LB, you got any of those? But and and that's what we want to do. I mean, we want to yeah, make some it, of these RVs. And yeah. Because a lot of times, of I'm sorry. Thank you. No, I was just saying a lot of times. In the city of Shreveport, you have a traditional urban lot, yeah. and going out into the parish, you have five, ten acres of land right. where these same things are occurring. So, we won't be sending anybody to jail. We're just getting to the point of introducing to them what the ordinance is saying, and to use so that we can possibly make those modifications. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Dominic. Commissioner Atkins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Clark. Yes, sir. I'm a little confused. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just a little confused here on, uh, you know, you've often pushed for the, the UDC, the Unified Development Code, but I thought I just heard you say that ordinances need to be different in the parish. How do, those don't compute. Those two statements don't don't agree with my understanding of what what we were trying to do. What what I was saying, Commissioner, was that. Many times, uh, conditions are different in the parish than they are in the city. I agree uh, with that. And like uh, Commissioner Dominique was saying, uh, a RV on a typical 60 foot wide, 100 foot, 50 foot deep lot in the city is a lot different from an RV parked on a five acre track of land out in the parish. But presently, we have the same ordinances. Uh, for developmental purposes, we strongly believe that the same uh, patterns should be used and the same codes are applicable. But maybe a as we look out into the residential areas, some of the uh, codes can be rela relaxed a little bit because of the conditions and, and the actual land mass that you have out in the parish. Okay, so I, I agree, with, I agree with, with my understanding of what you just said there. So we really aren't trying to have the same uniform Uniform development code across the city and the parish, or across the city and the ten mile jurisdiction. Five mile. Five mile. Pardon me. Five mile. We wish we had ten, but we'll take five. <laughs> five. Pardon me. They go three. So, so we're going to relax <laughs> on that a little bit. Is what I'm hearing. Yes, sir. And and that's why I wanted to start this process with the commission because the commissioners may have a desire to relax some of the things, uh, especially in the residential areas. But uh, I think that. The, and some of the things that with the amendments will relax things in the commercial areas that are pretty tight right now. And as you all know, they, they became loosened because of the pushback uh, by a lot of the developmental community. And those things did not get transitioned over to the parish. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Commissioner LBJ. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clark, I too have received number of calls about RVs and large boats and you know I think the thing that alarmed those citizens the most was that these RVs and boats have been sitting out there for years and nobody has said anything and now it's an issue they're getting these citations or warnings or whatever um, and you know when we rolled the UDC out I was one of the um, persons that was basically fighting it because you know, I, I think a lot of people move outside of the city limits to be able to do, have a little bit more freedom of, on their property of land. And they typically have larger lots, and so they want to have some nice homes, but then also park their RV at the house instead of putting it into some kind of storage facility or have a boat and have it to the side or put it under a particular shed. And, you know, on those, you know, things, if if the neighborhoods and the time in which they was developed had a covenant, then they would know that either they want to stay there or they don't. 
But a lot of times, <coughs> these neighborhoods, when they are developed, there's no covenant because nobody really thinks somebody's going to go out there and build a half million dollar house. And so when they do that, and then they put an RV out there, now it rubs some of the other neighbors the wrong way. They call and say, well, they had this RV sitting in front of my yard, or their yard, and they think it's a castle. Um, but, you know, uh, I will, today when we get down to communiques, I will set up a long-term planning meeting to try to address some of those um, amendments to the UDC that we need to sign off on uh, so that they can get moving forward. Um, there's a lot of issues with the UDC, and, and you know, a lot of people don't really realize it until they're trying to utilize something. Or they're trying to build, modify, and then they realize that, oh, I can't do that, or they told they can't do that. But other than that, nobody sat there and read that, that manual that was so thick. Uh, but and then once they do realize that they ran into a brick wall, then we get phone calls. Uh, and one thing I always tell them is, hey, they had plenty of public hearings. Uh, you could have voiced your concern, but I understand because the majority of people in Caddo Parish didn't go to those public hearings. And so it was basically that they didn't concern them until to now. Um, so um, I just think that we'll schedule a meeting and um, I'll come up with a date by the time we get down to communiques and we can try to address some of those, those issues. Thank you. And if I may, uh, that's, that's part of the reason that the, the inspectors are out now, uh, because, and I, and I continue to reinforce that, that there may need to be some amendments to other sections of the sections of the ordinance beyond the ones that we're talking about in the amendments that were given to the city and the parish uh, to, to review. And, and we're very interested in doing that. We're not wanting to upset the citizens in the parish of Caddo. We just have a situation where this is the ordinance that's on the book. <laughs> And it is high time that that we started ensuring that the quality of life in the parish is at a level comparable to the city. The ordinances may be diff different, and the expectations and the requirements may be different, but we need to start the process of improving the quality of life outside the city limits of Shreveport. Thank you, okay. Mr. Clark. Uh, Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, thank you, um, Acting President. Um, Thank you, uh, Mr. Clark, for coming down today. Um, I know that um, I've had the pleasure of serving on the Master Plan Committee, and in that committee, um, you, uh, you've you committed to uh, not only communicating uh, with the city and the parish, but you've also committed to listening. And uh, I know that, in my experiences, that you've done that. And just by your being here today, I think that communication uh, will be the key. Um, as Commissioner Johnson was saying, listening will be the key. So I, I applaud you and I thank you for that. And as it relates to um, Commissioner Atkins, I can appreciate what your question is as well. Uh, but we found that when it comes to zoning and planning and those type of things, that really the only absolute is that there are no absolutes. But the goal remains to uh, be as unified and as consistent as you can, which is um, the, the spirit or the intent of the unified code. So to be exact uh, obviously won't happen, but the goal remains the same. And I feel that uh, the MPC has identified that and is doing a pretty good job in continuing with that. But uh, I can appreciate what you were saying as it relates to what um, appears to be some areas, some blurred lines, but it's because there are distinct differences between the city and the parish and that type of thing. But I want to thank you for coming down and for staying consistent um, in your goals to communicate with us. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Lynn. Yes, Mr. Clark, since you've taken the helm of the MPC, the, the delicacies and the nuances of the master plan and the plan building group have really come together, and I want to let you know how appreciative I am Thank you. to all of the effort that you're putting in and recognizing the difference between the city and the parish and, and the little tweaks <laughs> that need to happen within both of, those, uh, both of those laws that we put into place. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you That's so much, sir. Mr. Acting President. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Clark, there's nobody else on the board. Uh, I think some more people may want to speak to you during communiques. I don't know if you're leaving or not, but uh, if not, that's all. Thank you so much, Thank sir. You, Mr. Thank Clark. you so much, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Hopkins? Yes, sir. 
administrative report. Still you got one three, more. Three more items. Sir. Three more. <laughs> Very short <laughs> items. We have we have an update on the, on the bike path from Ken Ward, Public Works uh, Project Manager. This is a request of Commissioner Matthew. <clears throat> Who's that? Good evening. How are y'all? It's been a little while. I have to say, it's been a year ago. I was here asking for some, uh, or actually presenting to you an opportunity for a uh, some funds to do a bike facilities grant, federal money, uh, to the tune of about two hundred eighty thousand dollars with about a seventy thousand dollar parish match. Uh, you did grant us those funds uh, through this, between then and now. We've actually gone through the process, made our application, awarded, designed the project. Have, have, have actually got it through DOTD and now it's ready to be bid in December. So I would hope that probably as early as probably time if they find a low contractor, award the project to be January, late January, we'd be in construction probably in March. So that is one of the fastest times that I've seen a DOTD project uh, actually get through all the way through approval process when it relates to federal funds on that. So uh, Commissioner Lynn, I appreciate all the, the effort and, and push. He's been a uh, the, the, the steamroller for this project as it relates on, on the federal side. Um, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, without his help, I think that we probably wouldn't be where we're at now. I've done quite a few of these in, in the past, and it's, they're usually a two-year, 30-month two uh, 30, 30 process. And we've been able from start to finish be a little over, you know, 18 months to, to actually getting started. So uh, we're excited. It's 66 miles of bike facilities. Uh, when, and so you asked that question, what does that mean? What's bike awareness? We're going to be putting signs, uh, pretty much wrapping the city from one end to another, uh, tying into DOTD uh, routes, uh, tying into the city routes, uh, making aware of uh, bike facilities and bike usage in, on our roads in the parish. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty neat project and look forward to getting it started. Commissioner Lynn. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you some leaded questions, but I guess they're not leaded if I jump in right ahead and say that that's what they are. Um, so we were able to do this because we expanded the, the NL COG um, transportation study. And so that was how many years ago? That was three years ago. Three years ago? At least, yes, sir. Okay. Um, the parish has three phases of development for this plan is that correct that is correct and this covers all of phase one and all of phase two for not only Caddo Parish but some state roads as well we're not on any state roads or city roads we're just on parish roads okay but it does capture the low lot all the low-lying fruit on phase one and two there uh, of that study that you're referring to there's some community outreach stuff that we could actually grab as well Okay, but that, so that would are, be phase one and two. We are or are not doing all of phase one and two for all parish roads. We are, we are not getting the, the public awareness measures out just yet. But we've, we've done the low-lying fruit of grabbing and actually putting the signs out. In, in these type of projects taking the earliest 18 months, the longest 36 months to implement, what other projects do you have in the pipeline so that we don't wait for this to be finished after 20 months and then start another one, then have to wait another? I think the trick is to, you know, we got this started 18 months ago, then 15 months ago we should have started another one, and then 10 months ago we should have started another one so that we would have a continual progression where are you well un unfortunately if you remember that study the study is a is a, a parish wide it focused on the city as well as the parish correct if, if you really look at it that aspect that the parish has done everything that that's on that list except for some minor um, public meetings public awareness meetings uh, a lot of it actually involves the, the the city of Shreveport now to actually pick up step and, and run with it from there uh, and then those include tying onto the existing bike paths that they currently have there, there are some, some plans that exist on expanding the, the, the riverfront. Uh, they, what they like to do is expand the riverfront on some uh, railroads, old railroads, to, to tie into some places. And also take that and also tie it into ours out on North Lakeshore. Those are some of the plans. Now, those are very lofty goes for, for bike paths and very expensive. So those would actually, I think, the, the, if I, my memory serves me correct, on that study we talked about, too, is looking at some private private partnerships in those to actually fund those and move those forward so th those aren't anything that are just on the books you know and those would actually take some funding not only probably not necessarily as much on the Commission side 
but more so on, on the city council side and, and probably a, a leader and a spearhead person from that side to, to, to drive those. What is it in phase three that we have not even uh, approached? What, what is phase three? Yes, for phase three doesn't have a lot of in the, in the parish. It's majority city. Those are those big, large bike paths connectivity of the, that we already that, that to what we already have, and so those those were some of the, the the projects there. But as for the parish related, I think we're pretty we're pretty fulfilled as it relates to to following those in. Will you send me an email regarding everything in phase three that is sure. of the parish that, sure, that no we doubt. need to do? Also, um, LA sixty nine isn't that the designated pathway for state highways yes that is a uh, on, on their bike route around the parish 169 up to, to highway 2 isn't there a gas pipeline on 69 beside it um, there may be in a couple portions there but I'm not familiar with one okay it seems I recall a gas pipeline and them wanting to expand the gas pipeline do you, are you able to keep track of that to see that when they ever they want to do a gas pipeline that then would be the time to develop that sure. public-private partnership and sure. signing contracts with the pipeline companies, that they would be able to use a, that for a bicycle path as well as uh, to service their gas pipelines. I'll take a look at it. Typically, when pipelines are expanded, Public Works is notified. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen anything in that area, but I will. I will. I'll, we'll pull GIS up and see if we we have you something. Look there at now. all of the gas pipelines that travel through Caddo Parish. Most of them heading towards Lake Charles. And that's a lot, and that's any, a lot of that's a lot we can, of pipelines. We can we can take a look at it. You know, at, it at some GIS areas. If, uh, we Inocog do. will allow you access to it. Well, Inocog will. We just have to make sure. I'll go to the Jazz to see what they can easily identify, and we'll look at that. Because it, with all the expansions in Lake Charles, I would think that they would be doing upgrades to all the pipelines leading to Lake we Charles. Haven't, we haven't had in a couple of years any expansion of, of, of major pipelines. We've had a few minor here and there mainly along the LB Road area, but I'll, we'll take a look and Well, they and ride see. bicycles on LB Road also. They, they, they do, correct. But, you know, you, you're going to need connectivity. Just to just to have a, a bike path out in the, the, the wild blue yonder sometimes isn't the best way to go, especially if you're going to ask for funds for that. Well, in a safe spot for the bicycles to get off the road and let the 10 cars honking behind them pass them up, you know, that might save a life. Sure, I understand that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Ward. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Acting President. Thanks, Commissioner. Commissioner LBJ. Thank you, sir. Um, Ken, uh, yes, sir. I, I know this, this phase is adding additional bike trails, uh, but as the custodian of one that's on North Lakeshore Drive, right. uh, when you add all these, you got to make sure that we maintain Correct, them. correct. Um, you know, there's been sometimes I've called you guys and said, hey, yep. the grass is up too high because yep. not only are they bike um, paths, they're also walking trails. Sure, yes, sir. A lot, of, a lot of people in the area that walk those trails. A lot of And so... Um, they're afraid of you know snakes coming out sure. or some little other creatures coming out sure. and getting them. So um, that just an additional cost. <laughs> That's correct. And that you got to uh, factor in is maintaining those paths that you know you don't get all that overgrowth correct. on yes. it. Uh, you know the probably about two months ago there was a small deer that was hit on one and it, the deer sat there and sure decomposed did. because you know nobody right. moved it off the road. So. Uh, just something to, to think about and probably we'll have to include in budgets mm -hmm. to making sure that those areas right. are, are extra clean for That's those great. bicycles and walking walking paths. We do, and it's, it's a great point you bring up. And the, the grant with the Federal Highway Department, we actually have to spell out maintenance, you know, how we're going to replace them, how we're going to maintain them. So we, we have addressed it in, in this particular one, but you're right, we're often up there on North Lakeshore and, and West Lakeshore cleaning and, and, and picking up, and we honestly, we don't get to it enough. You're exactly correct. Right. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Lynn for the second time. Um, and I, I should have asked ahead of time, what what was the exact federal dollar that we got versus the Caddo Parish dollar? The Right now it's 280,000, actually 280,688 federal to our $70,172. Okay, so we're getting 280,000 for our 70,000 spent. Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> that's, uh, that's all for the commissioners. Uh, Ken, on so, the on the grant money, when you guys had to project for future expenses, will the federal 
government come in and help us with the overlay on the bike pass or are we going to be the ones that have to fully fund that well in this particular grant there there's zero bike pass this is actually sign signage awareness so these are these are bike signage wrapping the whole around the whole city on parish routes tying in from the dotd bike path route to our our routes to the city routes and so what you'll see in your district is, is a is probably about 200 signs being installed along of the city on all major routes informing that these are all bike lanes they're all bike we can we can ride bikes on every road in the parish and we're just kind of notifying hey these look watch out for bikes that's pretty cool i know uh, as our population density increases yes. a lot of people i know that are watching the video are thinking that we're spending 70,000 and 280,000 that's a lot for bikes and they don't necessarily ride a bicycle However, there's many populations and cities that do ride bikes, and it's, it's becoming very prevalent. Sure. Uh, a lot of people are starting to ride these scooters, uh, and because this is going to be on streets, they can still ride uh, semi-motorized vehicles as well. I'm not familiar with about semi-motorized. I'd have to kind of refer to enforcement on that. But I, I know bicycles, they're allowed to be on there as long as they ride properly. And, and so, you know, making aware, I mean, we have, you know, five to six bicyclists every year get hit on parish roads and, and most of it isn't because the bicyclists themselves it's typically not being aware and so anything that we can do to, to, to allow the motorists to be aware uh, I've ridden on picking cattle parish roads on, with my bike and, and there's some places there that's really make you nervous a lot of those on Ellaby Road and and, and, and uh, Leonard Road some some of those are really nerve-wracking when you start riding with the cars and, and what they do and so um, you know to, to put the the, the awareness out there for everybody to see with these the, these bright green signs are going to be very helpful. From a vehicle standpoint, does designating the bike path or the at road a bike path does it change any rules uh, on how the driver? No. No, sir. I mean, every road in the parish has the same, has same the same rights. We're just putting signs out there to aware that these are, the bikes can be out here as well. Ken, thanks for the great report, and uh, Commissioner Lynn, thanks for pushing us so hard for this. I know you've done this for many, many years, so thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay. Dr. So Wilson? We have, we have uh, our bond attorneys here today, Mr. Grant Studer and Ken Antti. Would you like to make a few comments right to the bond? <coughs> Grant Schluter with Foley Udell Bond Council. Ken Antti, Cruz and Associates, bond underwriter. <laughs> and um, we'll just address the ordinance that you have coming up this Thursday that's later on in the agenda. It provides for the details with respect to the successful sale of your refunding certificates, limited tax certificates. Uh, this council uh, commission had previously approved not exceeding four million of limited tax refunding certificates to refund the 2010 issue uh, with a reduction of the interest rate and the payments every year with no extension of the debt. Uh, the commission authorized the uh, finance director to execute a commitment letter, a bond purchase agreement, provided that the net savings from the refinancing exceeded the guidelines of the State Bond Commission. That has been done. It was done on October 31. Ken is going to describe the RFP process in sending this information out to banks and the responses. Uh, but basically, you have significant savings. Uh, we can go into some detail on that in just a minute. But Ken, you might just want to describe the, the process in sending the RFP out to a number of institutions. What we did was when we got all the information and put together we sent it out to 11 or 12 different big banking institutions of that we had eight respond back uh, the response ranged from two a net interest cost of 2.18 percent to 3.25 percent and we were able to uh, lock in key government finance at the 2.18 percent which is a very good interest rate based on your AAA rating and that 2.8 percent 2.18 percent compares to your outstanding bonds that were refinancing and will be retiring and they had rates going up to 3.75 percent so you had a significant reduction your present value savings which is the figure that the state bond commission looks at to see how successful a refinancing you have 
Um, the uh, present value savings um, was uh, over 5%, and that's many times greater than the minimum savings requirement of the State Bond Commission. So a very successful refinancing. Uh, your financial advisor, Namdi Thompson, was involved in every step of the process. This all occurred on October 31 when the bank responses came back and were returned. Uh, Namdi uh, analyzed it along with us, and we recommended it to the administration to execute the letter in accordance with your prior authority, and Haley did sign it. And, uh, um, everybody helped a great deal in getting this done. So you took advantage of some really low interest rates, reduced the interest rate greatly. Uh, you far exceed the state bond commission requirements, and it's one of the healthier refinancings around the state. Gentlemen, thank you for coming down. Commissioner Atkins would like to address you. Commissioner thank Atkins. Thank you. Thank you all. It sounds like a, a uh, successful mm -hmm. venture. You mentioned the present value savings of 5%. I mean, my, my experience with present value is typically a dollar value. Do you have a dollar the, value? The, save, the savings will be approximately 208000 208000 Does that include all the expenses associated with Everything. That's that's, the net savings? Yeah, that's the net savings after costs for the remaining life of the bond issue, which goes through 2030. The 5.17% present value savings is calculated on the present value savings figure that you referred to, which is 184,000 and change. I'm sorry, what's the difference between that 184 and the 208? Net, net value, present value of money. Okay, yeah. the present value. Over, over the life of the loan, if you'd have paid the loan as it was versus how you will now, you would have paid 208,000 more. But that 208,000 based on today's dollars is 178. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Uh, so we're, we're achieving about a 60 basis point savings uh, on the reduction from the, the 3.75 that you guys projected. Yeah, well, the outstanding bonds have rates that run from 3% to 3.75%. The new bonds have a 2.18% rate. I remember the figure of 270000 for our savings, but I guess I was off by about unfortunately about 60. That probably didn't include all the costs. Uh, do the cost include, is it commissions? And forgive me for asking you guys yeah, in front the, of everybody, but the, I'm naive to some bond stuff on how you guys well, get commissions. These actually are the lowest costs, but all of the savings are net of the costs and all of the costs go to the state bond commission as well as the administration for review. But uh, you have bond council fees, bond council expenses, financial advisor fee, uh, purchaser council fees, the winning bank uh, keys uh, required that they have independent counsel, which is QTAC Rock out of Omaha, and that's a $6,000 fee that we have to pay for that's included in this transaction. But your financial advisor looked at that and determined their rate at 2.18, 2.18%, even including that fee that they required to be paid was substantially better than the next bid, which was Trustmark at 2.45%. And then going on, you have a placement agent fee, you have a state bond commission fee, uh, publications, which is reimbursement to you for the publications on this transaction. So we get a, a true picture of what the actual savings are. Um, and then you have a paying agent and escrow agent fee. So to clarify, the true $205,000 is the savings after the fees are paid. Right, 203000 and change, okay. and that is net savings after all of the costs are paid. All of the costs are paid out of the bond issue. So at closing on December 3rd, uh, that is paid out of the proceeds of this bonds and you will have 203000 that you will not be paying on this bond issue over the remaining life of that issue. Councilman, I mean, uh, Commissioner yes, Chavez, one of the confusions of the 270 versus the 205 may have been the numbers when it was priced at that time and presented. That's what the market was at that time. Okay. And what probably anticipated. The market every day goes up and down, and so it's just a matter of when you hit it. Mm -hmm. and 
So earlier they were lower. The rates. I remember. I don't forget bit. a good sale. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so that, guys. That's the, the difference. In thanks that. for the presentation. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Job well done. Anytime. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you all for the opportunity. Thank you, President Silvest. We, we have an introduction. Um, you can guys, can I thank you? Sorry. Some of you all have not been here last Thursday. We did the budget presentation. So I'd like for Stephanie to come forward, please. I want to introduce Stephanie to the board. Stephanie Rico is now a new assistant director of finance. And she's a graduate of the University of Puerto Rico. She has a mass uh, MBA from LSUS here in Shreveport. And she comes from the Horseshoe Casinos. And she has 10 years of experience and she's a certified public uh, accountant. Welcome. Hi, mm -hmm. good afternoon. Yes, uh, so again, my name is Stephanie Rico. Um, I've met several of you already, but uh, for those of you that I have not met, just a little bit about myself. I am originally from Puerto Rico, um, but I have uh, called Shreveport Bossier my home for the last eight years. Uh, I currently live in District 3. Um, I'm very excited to be here and to um, I'm very much looking forward to building strong working relationships with all of you. Um, so, thank you. And she's a welcome addition to our team. So yes. Stephanie, welcome. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. aboard. Thanks. This is my last comment today. Uh, on, November, on November 13th, we have another budget retreat with you all to answer any further questions regarding the budget at 9 o'clock at the Swepco Business Center. And that concludes my comments for the day, sir. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hopkins? Next, we have commission uh, remarks, communiques, reports, and other items related to the work session agenda. I see none. Mr. Hopkins, moving along. President's report. I will allow Stormy to give the report on Thursday. All right, next, we move to old business. Authorized resolution of recognition of Miss Meredith Duncan it was delayed on 10 17 19. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Please vote. <coughs> that moves to Thursday. All right. Next, we move to new business. Authorized introduction of ordinance number 5933 of 2019. Move to advance. Second. We have a motion and a second. Would you like to speak on your motion? No. All right, please vote. Um, you better ask Woody. Let's see. Yes, sir. You tell him? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm voting yes. We'll go ahead. Dr. Wells, can you want to clarify what this is for finance? Oh, yes, sir. We, typically, what we do, commissioners, if someone's retired and leaving the organization, we try to put it into our budget for the next year. And this was an unforeseen move. We had to resolve a uh, issue relative to vacation earnings, and that's what this money is for. All right. So you need to get a question on that, Commissioner? All right. Please vote. And that moves to Thursday. Authorized introduction of ordinance number 5934 of 2019. Amend the budget investment revenues and expenditures for the building maintenance fund, capital improvement fund, general fund. Motion to advance. Second. A motion to advance and a second. Please vote. <laughs> that passes eight with four out of the chamber. Next, we'll authorize the introduction of ordinance number 5935. An ordinance. So, so Second. You want to speak on that motion? No. Please vote. That passes eight with four out of the chamber. All right, next, we move to authorize approval of 2020 audit schedule. Move to advance. Second. Commissioner LBJ. I'd like to make an amendment to add uh, public works and remove human resources. 
Second. All right. We have a motion on the floor and a second. LBJ, you want to speak on your motion? Uh, I talked about it earlier when the young lady was up. Uh, I think we went through a couple areas of human resources already, but we haven't touched public works yet, so I figure we need to touch every department before we get deep, dig deep into one particular one. All right. Commissioner Atkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't think the committee would have a problem with that. Um, it's certainly a, a legitimate area to to audit and uh, it's all in the same moderate category so that's fine if, if the body feels better about that I don't have a problem with it. Sure. Mr. Hopkins will you read the, uh, um, uh, the amendment? Yes. And, uh, yeah, it's to add public works and remove human resources so it would be facilities and maintenance CCC public works juvenile service probation. Yes. Uh, all right. I'm sorry though what matter of clarification, what, which of those public works categories did you want to look at first? Yes, sir. Can, can we add that uh, in by Thursday? Okay. Let me look at them kind of. Sure. That, that's okay with me if it works with the. Uh, yes, that's that's the good. Inside. All right. Let's please vote. Mm -hmm. That passes eight with four out of the chamber. And that was also the move to Thursday. Yes. All right. Authorized reappointment to Cattle Parish Fire District 7. I make a motion that we um, move um, the Fire District 7 appointment and also the authorization of appointment of Ward 2 to Thursday. Both of those. Please. Second. All right. Got a motion and a second. Uh, Commissioner Dahmer, would you like to speak on that motion? No. All right. Please vote. That passes eight with four out of the chamber. Next, we uh, move to discuss the selection process of the Cattle Parish Commission Clerk. Move like to Thursday. Move. And global <coughs> discussion, the authorization of the special proclamation, the authorized special resolution for Lowe's to Thursday. Second. Second. Thank you. So that was to remove the selection? No, no, no. So move it. Oh, oh, move, move it to Thursday. Move okay. it to Thursday. Okay. And go right. and move in advance, all those. Can I? Who's who's the the who was the second? Me. Mike. Okay. Commissioner Dominic, did you want to speak on that? Yeah, just one question. Todd, can you get us a, or do we have um, a list on what we did, what procedures we did when we made the appointment for you? Yes, sir, I do. So you'll be ready for us for Thursday? I can tell you about it now. <laughs> 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 yeah, go ahead. I like it. It's an like arm wrestle know. competition. I mean, that's what everybody else wants to hear. We'll hear that Why? this time. I, I would. Sure. Go ahead. What what we did uh, <coughs> when I was selected, the uh, policies and procedures committee took in and met first human resources advertised. We received 303 applications. Then it went, they looked at the, I guess human resources, looked at the different applications and there was a criteria of four things that they marked off on. And out of that, 44 made the cut. Then I think the committee looked at all those applications of 44. That's right. And they scored them. And out of that, they came, Came 10. And out of those 10 applications, they had the first round of interviews. And then from they, that, they, they was the committee? They, the committee? The committee. Yes. And from that committee, they sent four to the full body for full interviews. And that's wow. how they were selected. That's good job, Todd. That's what I remember. It didn't work really well. <laughs> I think we got a great. It worked pretty well for me. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mr. Saddle. We'll be making a motion to have you removed out of here. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I just, you know, after you start saying that, Todd, all that stuff refreshes my memory because yeah. I was on the committee. So I do remember that. So Thank you. We, we have set it up to so, advertise. So, however, you know, um, 
Thursday, obviously, we'll be discussing that, but at least we have some recollection of what we did. I uh, hope we don't get into the thing to where we did with the register of voters and have us all having to meet up here every Saturday to interview 300 people. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get something kind of like that done. I agree with that. Could I, I guess the other avenue would be, you know, should we do it now or should we wait? Obviously, if we do it now, we did get some selection. That person would be able to, you know, shadow the uh, clerk, Mr. Hopkins, and maybe have some, you know, at least a few weeks before they just, you know, took office. Uh, and just for the information, I will make available the, the job description, what's entailed. Also, to let you know, I have 32 work days left. So, just to let you know how the process is. So. Todd, will you email the procedures that you just explained uh, to the full body? I will. All right. Commissioner LBJ. Yes. Uh, I, that was fine to do back then, but I, I don't like that uh, because it leaves it down to a committee of a few to, to break it down to from 300 to 10. So what makes those, that committee of, of a small group to know what top 10 that they need to bring in? You could have had somebody else that was outside that top 10 that could have might have done a better job. Don't know. Um, and we're all elected by our constituents to serve Cattle Parish, and this is a Cattle Parish position. So I'm sorry if it's 300 applicants. We need to look at, all of us need to look at 300 applicants. Now, we might put the number down to a smaller group, but it's done as a, as a body instead of a, a group of small. That's, that's just my uh, opinion about that. I just don't feel that four or five commissioners should do that. Even if I'm on that committee, I still don't think it's right. Uh, so uh, I would be more of the <coughs> fact of if we get 300, we all look at 300, and maybe we come up with, uh, each one of us come up with a top 20. <coughs> and then match those top 20 to that's who we interview. You know, I don't know. But, but at least it's something that will go across all of the district lines and everybody can say that they had to say so in the ones that we actually interview instead of a few. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I definitely agree with you on the fairness of us all having a decision. Uh, I know the author of this uh, resolution was Commissioner Jackson. He's not here to speak on it. Um, do you think possibly you could get him or maybe yourself on your ideas and, and email each other through the board so that we know what we look at? Well, I don't think Thursday? he had one. He just wanted to bring he it to the us table. to discuss it. To discuss it, right. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, if uh, you have 300 applicants and if you have qualifications um, that outline <coughs> what the qualifications are, um, do you not think that, there, that those people who do not qualify can be uh, eliminated prior? Or do you think that the body needs to look at people who are not qualified to establish that they are not well, qualified? I mean, once the, the criteria is set, and if some people don't even come close to the, being uh, what the criteria sets, right. then they're automatically eliminated. But I'm just talking about the ones that will qualify to be a clerk, which out of 300, we might get 150. But I just don't think that a body of four should make a decision on that as opposed to those 12. Okay, I understood your position. I just wanted some clarity yeah. as related to because uh, one would think that out of the out of the initial number, there will be some that do not qualify. Right. I was wondering if you thought it was necessary that the body would. Right, because even when, when Todd does his um, job description, I think we should put in what we feel that the next clerk should be. There should be some things that I would think that we might want to add and make some qualifications to that position. So now when it's is advertised, then if a person doesn't meet those qualifications, then they're automatically disqualified. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Doug Dominic. For yeah, I just under, understand. I appreciate you, you know, at least explaining so we get to talk about it today, but I don't know what those qualifications are. Hopefully we can come up with something. If you hear what Mr. Hopkins said, he only has 32 days left. <laughs> Um, you know, we got to get this thing going. And sometimes, we're like the the Baptists, with 12 of us, it can really take us a heck of a long time to get something done. So, um, I don't know. I look forward to talking about Thursday. So, Todd, if you could email that to to us, and then um, you know, the committee can set the criteria. 
Huh? The committee can set the criteria. Yeah. What committee? The the one that that either the, the president will do it ad hoc or she'll select one of the committees. Okay, that's fine. And and just for information, they did. They had four it was four criteria, and you had to meet three of those four items. To, to and that's where the forty from three hundred three where the forty four came from. Just you know, would like for it to get you know right. So I, I, can. I guess will there the be an interim in the interim? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess if we it do this before we yeah, I guess it depends on whether y'all or we get one appointed before December thirty first. December thirty first should I stay or? The December the 30th is my last day, yes. That's true. So we're going to have to have one appointed by then, or, you know, I'm sure yeah. Michelle would act as the interim. Yeah, until okay. We, until the new, new commission oh, sure. gets someone appointed. Thank you. Uh, All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Atkins. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, could you ask the clerk to consider distributing the criteria that was used in last the last hiring process to everybody on the commission to review uh, I'll, I'll get back with uh, human resources and we'll pull that I've got, I know what I have but I'll we'll double check with and the job is make sure yeah that's what yeah, I mean the job description yeah. all right we have the, the vote to englobe and guys I'll get with uh, President Watts and, and make sure she's here on Thursday and if not we'll discuss which um, committee to send that to to the global to advanced uh, mr. Hopkins you want to read all those we, we can move them forward we don't know. Let's yeah. see. They were That's all to, to communicate. Discuss selection and process of the parish commission clerk to move forward. Authorize special proclamation claiming Sunday, November as Timothy R. Jones Day. And that actually will not be on the agenda. And then authorize special resolution recognition to Lowe's. And that will be on the agenda. All right. Please vote. And that passes a Thursday. We lost one, so with seven with five out of the chamber. <coughs> Next, we move to communiques and committee reports. Commissioner LBJ. Yeah, I just want to set long-term planning committee meeting for November 18th. That's a good day. That's a meeting day. That's a Monday. Monday. Yeah. We good on that date? I know we got some other stuff we got to try to do too. Uh, as far as I know, at this moment, yes, sir. Okay. What day is that? November 18th. After or when? Um, the way this going, probably need to do it after, but uh, <laughs> I'd like to try to do it uh, before. Yeah, we have to do it right after this. You and I, I'm on that one. I'm on one. Right? LBJ, is that it? That's it. All right. Uh, Mr. Clark, looking for an update on that uh, Baird Road and uh, Burt Coons, that the old Circle K with all that Thank stuff you. in there. I know they sent them some information about. Um, we'll get together offline. Thank you. Thank you. I know somebody wants to leave. <laughs> so, 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 all right. Where did you go? Later, right?